Would you open your Bible, please, with me to Proverbs, the 15th chapter. Proverbs 15 for our study today. The accent. The accent. Accents can be so intriguing, can't they? And so interesting and quite beautiful. When you hear an accent, it, it helps you to place that person, perhaps their, their homeland. I've often thought that I would love to have a, a British accent. I think there's just something so elegant and so refined about a British accent. My father, every now and then, you can hear New York coming out in his words. He grew up in the New Jersey and New York area, and every now and then, out comes a little New Jersey or a little New York. My first call as a pastor was in the state of Washington, and when I took a call to the state of Texas, on the very last Sunday I was there, several of the members of the congregation said, we can't wait to hear one of your sermons in a few years, because we're wondering whether or not you're going to speak with a southern accent. Accents. Intriguing, interesting, beautiful. What can people tell about you by your accent? Specifically, can they tell that your homeland is heaven? Is your accent expressed through words that are chosen? What can people tell about you by your accent? We turn today to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is such an interesting book. It's really a, a collection of wise sayings that speak in, give insight to life and attitudes. And in this, the 15th chapter of Proverbs, what we have is a description of what I'd like to call a, a heavenly accent. A heavenly accent. The heavenly accent is, is so different than the accent that is so common in the world, the world's accent. The heavenly accent is, is distinctive. It, it stands out and it is so, so beautiful. The first thing about the heavenly accent is that it is soft, soft. Take a look with me, please. At the 15th chapter, we'll start verse 1. A soft answer turns away wrath. Let me paint a scenario for you. You see a person coming toward you, and you can just tell by their body language that they're really angry. You can almost see the steam coming out of their ears. And when they... When they come close to you, all of a sudden this verbal bomb goes off and you are caught in the sonic boom of it all. Now, what can be your reaction to that? Well, what can well up inside is, is anger, right? Anger. But if anger rises up and you start to fill the cannon with a verbal missile to fire back, well, what, what accent would be heard? What would be heard? See, chapter 15, verse 1 says, a, a soft answer turns away wrath. Soft means here it, it, tender. It means gentle. Because the opposite response, a response back of simply a missile of anger headed right back toward the person, 
Well, that's just going to stir things up, isn't it? Take a look with me, please. Second part of verse 1. But a harsh word stirs up anger. The Apostle Paul said this in Philippians 4. He said, let your gentleness be known to everyone. Anger can be so, so irrational. I think, for example, of Jonah. Jonah wanted God to absolutely destroy Nineveh. But Nineveh repented. And so in chapter 3 of Jonah, it says, when God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. Well, what was Jonah's response? But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. Well, that's, that's really, really an interesting series of things to be angry at God for, isn't it? Anger can be so irrational. That's why the, the soft answer, the soft answer is so very, very important. The soft answer reflects our heavenly accent. And, and it's not just in what is said, but it's also in how it is said. The heavenly accent is soft. Soft. Secondly, the heavenly accent presents knowledge well. It presents knowledge well. Back to our text in Proverbs chapter 15 verse 2. The tongue of the wise dispenses knowledge. A, a, a plain translation of that would just be to say it makes knowledge good. You see the thoughtful response, the considered word and tone that makes knowledge good the words of the fool the words of the fool just just tumble out they just spill forward without consideration there's no concern about the tone they just tumble out of the mouth and are are spilled all over the place But the heavenly accent, the heavenly accent is, is thoughtful and considered. Back again, please, to verse 2. The tongue of the wise dispenses knowledge, but the mouths of fools pour out folly. The heavenly accent, it's soft. The heavenly accent is thoughtful. And third, the heavenly accent, it gives life. It gives life. Take a look with me, please, at verse 4 of our text. A gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. That phrase, a gentle tongue, literally you can translate that a, a healing tongue. A healing tongue. It gives, it gives life. I think of our gospel text for today, Luke the fourth chapter. All spoke well of him, speaking of Jesus. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. 
Paul writes in Colossians, the fourth chapter. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer everyone. It's, it's words and, and tone that is gracious and appealing. It's, it's words and tone that, that gives life because one is concerned about the relationship with the other, that, that one understands that when we speak, we are speaking to another human being who has feelings. It is that expressing of truth in love. The heavenly accent. The heavenly accent is, it's soft. It's thoughtful. It gives life. Why is it then? Why is it then that the heavenly accent can wane? Can wane? It's so interesting. You know that the waning of the heavenly accent is linked to a heart condition? It's true. The waning of the heavenly accent is linked to a heart condition. Because you see, the, our, our words and, and how we say it, why the, the origin of that doesn't come from our mouths, it doesn't come from our tongues, it comes from the heart. And the Bible reveals that our heart is inclined to evil. We confess, don't we, that we are by nature sinful and unclean. And our sinfulness expresses this heart condition that is linked with the words and tones that can be expressed. James puts it this way. James, the third chapter. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. That's quite a sentence, isn't it? For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. And from the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Paul says this, entirely out of place is obscene, silly, and vulgar talk, but instead let there be thanksgiving. Why, in verse 3 of our text, we are reminded of this fact that the eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. God is not some disinterested observer when it comes to us. God is incredibly interested in us and what we say and what we do and, and, and how we say it. And everything that we say, everything that we do, every tone of our words, it, it, it all comes before him. He, he sees it all and he hears it all. And it is judged in accordance with his perfect standard. Not our standard, not the standard of the family, not the standard of society, but his perfect standard. Because God knows, God knows that every time we open our mouths to speak every time we speak. 
we're making a witness. We are witnessing as one who professes Christ as Lord. And so the very words that come out of our mouth, one hears that and can ask, is that what a Christian sounds like? That just sounds like the accent of the world to me. Is there any among us that haven't fallen short? Is there any among us that haven't regretted words that we have shared or how we have shared them? We all fall short. We all fall short in terms of the words that come out of our mouths and the tone in which it is shared. We are all sinners. And yet God in his grace sends his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to the cross. And on the cross, Jesus Christ takes all of our sin, all of our sin upon him, including all of those words that we never should have said, including all of that tone that we should have never expressed. He bears it all on the cross And the word that comes from the mouth of Jesus on the cross is to tell the story, paid in full, the debt of sin paid. And the resurrection is God's absolution to us. When I was in seminary, it was around Christmas time. I was home back in the state of Washington for a Christmas break. It was a, it was a cold and wet wintry day there, a little bit of ice on the, on the roads. It wasn't the best of days. And I remember turning to my mother and I said, well, I'm going to go out and about. I'm going to go out and about. And, and she said, you're... You're going to go out in a boat? I looked at her and I said, no, I'm going to go. And then I realized, after a few years at seminary, my Minnesota accent was starting to show. My, my O's were becoming more elongated, and the phrases out and about were becoming commonplace. My... Minnesota accent was showing. God comes to us, beloved, and God continues to form in us his heavenly accent. His heavenly accent, making it, making it distinctive, making it clear so that people hear it and it is beautiful. Give thanks to God. Give thanks to God that God will bring forth from you this week that heavenly accent. Because that heavenly accent is an incredible way to bless others. We've been looking in this series at a host of ways in which, by God's grace, we can bless other people, that we can be those people that that leave the blessing in other people's lives and give thanks because God will express that heavenly accent from you. And in so doing, You'll bless the other. Give thanks. For from you will be heard that accent that's that's soft, thoughtful, and gives 
life. And God will be glorified. And people, <laughs> they will love your accent.